lot of women today that are dissatisfied with their sex life. They're actually not even interested. They have an indifferent feel about that. Did you know that there are 25 to 50 percent of women that complain that there is an issue with this and they would like it to be different? What does this cause? One of the causes that could be is that you don't have a romantic spouse, that there is just a lot of strain on the marriage. There is a lot of stress financially or there are different things that become an issue that have created this, this, this indifferent feeling about it. Other factors could be that there are, you're so busy with your full-time job with things around it that are not really part of the marriage and children that just take all your time. And at that point, what often happens is that the spouse becomes the very last person on the calendar, on the daily schedule, and ends up being left out because of exhaustion, tiredness, or whatever else is going in your life. If this is you, I want to talk to you because I have a message I want to share with you that I know that can make a difference for you as well. There's actually a story about that in the Bible. And what it talks about, an entire full book in the middle of the Bible called the Songs of Solomon that talks about sex. It's about two people. There are actually a couple more people in the story. But the main two characters are the lover, which is the man, and the beloved, that is the woman. And it is God's story for you, God's message for you, that he created, he designed sex for the marriage between a man and a woman to be beautiful, to be intimate, to be fruitful, and to be a union together for you to draw really close together. So while the craziness and the busyness of your life takes place, how can you benefit from that and reap all its beauty that's in it for you too, if you are married. Now, I want to really talk about that a little bit. And the first thoughts that come to your mind right now could be, no, my husband does this, my husband does that, or I'm involved in this, even as a guy, because this message is for the both of you, or whatever it is. And, and those thoughts, like porn or pictures or different things come to mind, and that is not what I'm going to talk about today. So often when you look at the internet or when you look at the different organizations, all they tell you is don't, don't, don't. It's bad, judgmental, and all these things. And that is not what we're talking about today. We're talking about a man who is the lover, and we're talking about a woman who is the beloved. It's a beautiful story. It starts out that this woman, the beloved, is a hard worker in a vineyard. She's overly protected by her brothers. They want to make sure nothing bad happens to her, by herself or by other people. This is a working woman that knows how to work, and she's become insecure and very self-conscious about what she is doing. And it's become a little bit of a challenge because she sees other women like there, out there that have it so much less busy than she does. And because of that, she wants to look like that. She wants to not be tired. She wants to look beautiful. She wants to be like them, but she knows that's not what she has. And then her lover gets his eye on her. He likes what he sees. He loves what he sees. They start dating. They start hanging out. They start courting. And from one thing comes another. And while she is dreaming in her first dream of everything, that she hopes that this marriage is going to bring to her. She fantasizes, she dreams, and she knows it is going to be the best, the very, very best. Finally, the night arrives, the wedding night, and it's exquisite, and it, it is in full detail. And actually, some people might say at this point, this could be an X-rated book. They are completely enjoying one another, and then the marriage begins. And as the marriage goes on, and as everything starts working, they are deeply in love with each other. But as in most marriages, at one point, something happens in that marriage that she makes herself, she backs out, and there is an indifference, an emotional indifference within herself. 
And that is where a lot of you are today. So let's pick it up. We're going to go to the Song of Solomons, and we're going to start at chapter 5, when the Beloved has again a dream. And this is what it says. I was asleep, but my heart was awake. Sounds familiar? I was asleep, but my heart was awake. A voice, my beloved, was knocking. Open to me, my sister, my darling, my dove, my perfect one, for my head is drenched with dew, my locks with the damp of the night. He longs to be close to her. He longs to draw to her. He longs to be with her. And here are her excuses. Listen how she responds in her dream. I have taken off my dress. Excuse me, that would be no problem for a guy. I have taken off my dress. How can I put it on again? I have washed my feet. How can I dirty them again? She comes up with excuses. What do we use today? Headaches, too tired, exhausted, no time, don't you see, I need a break. Whatever it is, she comes with excuses. She says she baited. She's not wearing any clothing. She is in bed. Her beloved does not stop like there, or the, the lover does not stop like there, and he still pushes a little further. And he says, my beloved extended his hand through the opening. My beloved extended his hand through the opening, and my feelings were aroused for him. She sees him at the door handle. His hands are dripping in oil with mirror. He wants to come in, and in her dream, she still all of a sudden realizes, wait a minute. What I had was so good. And because of my indifference, because of my distance, some things, things are falling apart. She changes her mind when she sees his extra effort to long to draw to clo be close to him, to her, to long to be close to her. And then she arises from the bed as it says, I arose to open up to my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, and my fingers were liquid with myrrh on the handles of the bolt. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and had gone. She waited too long. He leaves. He has disappeared. And now she knows it is bad news. Because when you have the union of two bodies together and there becomes the separation between the two, what happens that such a wall starts arriving by the feelings of one side, by the emotions of the other side, Thoughts start taking place, and the distance gets bigger instead of smaller. And one person that really likes this when that happens is Satan himself. He loves to divide. He loves to destroy. He loves to separate. And he loves that it never draws back together in the way that God intended it. She knows. And in her dream that was first a dream, now starts turning into a fool blown nightmare because this is what it says next my war heart went out to him as he spoke i searched for him but i did not find him i called him but i did not answer him the watchmen who make the rounds in the city found me they struck me and wounded me she's getting beat up the guardsmen of the walls took away my shawl from me there is a nightmare there is a problem there is separation there is destruction, and she knows it is not good. Then in her dream, she does something that is key for you to make a difference in this as well. But before we go there, stay tuned. The Bart Marshall Show is all about overcoming hard times, hardships, and struggles. It's about the real deal and no phony baloney Christianity. And if you like what you see and long to become part of what we're doing to make a difference in this world, we would love to hear from you. One way you could do that was by getting one of our shares cards at zero cost, no cost to you at all. And you could support us by going to your grocery store and then 3% of that will be donated to our ministry at no cost to you. Or if you would like more information, how you could make a difference and contribute to us, we would like to hear that from you. Contact us, 855-836-1100, or check out barbtv.org. God loves us. God loves you. Let's make a difference. 
We're talking about how to have good sex as a married couple and uh, between a man and a woman. God created it for good. And a lot of things have happened that Satan wants to destroy it and make it ugly and evil. And it's not necessary. You can have that good sex life as well. So what is it going to take? As we're talking about the woman, the woman that knows she has made a mistake, she has emotionally detached herself from the husband, when she realizes that, she doesn't gossip. She doesn't just butcher him. She doesn't just make him look ugly. She doesn't separate from herself from him any longer. But she tries to make the wrong right. And she looks for help. Now, the help most women today would look at that would be to talk to five or seven other women and tell them their problem and just make their husband very ugly. But what the husband needs the most is for you to respect him. So she goes, here the beloved goes, to look for help. And this is what she says in verse 8. I adjure you, I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved as to what you will tell him, for I am lovesick. I want him. I long to be close to him, not just sexually, but intimately together at all levels, physically, spiritually, and especially emotionally. She wants help. And the response of those she's talking to is a very typical response because that's say, what kind of a beloved is your beloved? Is he a good guy? O oh, most beautiful among women, what kind of beloved is your beloved that does you adjure us? They ask her, what kind of a guy is he? And now she responds. And instead of focusing on the bad, she focuses on the good. And I'm going to condense this a little bit so you don't have to sit through this incredible, incredible respect she shows her husband. She says in 1 Tim, my beloved is dazzling and ruddy. In 11, his head is like gold. In 12, his eyes are like doves. In 13, his cheeks are like a bed of balsam. 14, his hands are rods of gold. His legs are pillars. His mouth is full of sweetness. And she goes on and on and on. And when you talk about your husband and share the good that he does, what do you think it does to those around you and that it will do to you? All of a sudden, you realize he's not such a bad guy. All of a sudden, the people around you all want your husband because he looks like a great guy. They like what they hear. And you build him up. And you start realizing that you're not responsible for the actions of your spouse, but that you are responsible for him. And now the women are excited to help. This is key to your relationship that you do not trash, but that you build up. This is key to the relationship. And they respond in an incredible way. And they say, where has your beloved gone? In chapter 6, O most beautiful among women. Where has your love, beloved turned that we may seek him with you? They want to help. They want her to have the best ever that is available, which was created by God. And this is the trick, friends. This is the trick. Because it looks like as we read in the dream that the lover has left and is nowhere to be found. But when the friends ask, where is he? She knows exactly where he is, which shows us that this was an emotional distance that she had separated herself from her. And the more emotional you're separated, the more you depart away from it, the more problems it causes on both sides. She answers them in verse 2. My beloved has gone down to his garden, to the beds of balsam, to pasture his flock in the garden, and gather lilies. I am my beloved's. And my beloved is mine. This is talking about mature love. This is talking about beauty. She knows she belongs to him and that he belongs to her. Because of this, she gets excited. She realizes she has something much better that she has put on the side and allowed things to get in the way of. So she chooses to go after him. 
And in chapter 7, verse 11, she wanders away and says, I went down to the orchard of nut trees to see the blossoms of the valley, to see whether the vine had budded or the pomegranates had bloomed. Before I was aware, yeah, right. Before I was aware, my soul set me over the chariots of my noble people. And there she is and sees her husband. She goes to him. She doesn't wait for him to get back to her again, but she goes to him and goes right to him. He sees her. He sees her attitude. He sees her beauty, and he responds, not with, who do you think you are? You dumped me. You rejected me. No, he did not respond for that. And husbands, this is for you. He responded with positive. He responded with praise. Praise your wives. And he said, how beautiful are your feet in sandals. O prince's daughters, the curves of your hips are like jewels. It is okay to talk precious to your wife together. The work of the hands of an artist. Your navel is like a round goblet, which never lacks mixed wine. Your belly is like a heap of wheat fenced about with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of gazelle. He likes what he sees and he tells her. Now, most women today, when they're told they look gorgeous, they look beautiful, will point out to their spouse everything they don't like about themselves. Girls, knock it off. You do not do that. You accept that. You embrace it. You take it in and you are all you can be. Then, when that happens, when she goes back, he praises, guess what happens? She wants to have sex. It has all turned around. Why? Because the way it should be has completed each other's. And she says in verse 10 of chapter seven, I am my beloved's and his desire is for me. Come, my beloved, let us go out into the country. Let us spend the night in the villages. Now they are on one team. Now they are connected. Now they work together. Why? Because they did not trust each other, built each other up, forgave each other, and came back together. And that is God's plan for you. How can you do this today? What is it that you need to do? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Janice, and I'm with the Barb Marshall Show. I'm the TV show coordinator. And I know that you have a story to share with us, one of triumph over a pain that you've experienced or a tragedy in your life. Those are the kinds of things that we want to share here on the Barb Marshall Show. We want the story to be about you and about what Jesus Christ has done in your life to give you the hope, the new life in Christ that only he can do. Contact us at The Barb Marshall Show. You can go to our website. You can call us on our toll-free number or uh, go to barbtv.org. We're talking about what you can do to have good sex. And I'm going to give you a couple of pointers right now. The very first point that is important is about you yourself and this is for the beloved this is for the woman start taking care of yourself be your best every day and when you take care of yourself when you are the best you can be every day it makes you feel more beautiful and this is the very most important tip that I am giving you right now this is what I want you to write down this is what I want you to remember, and this is what I want you to take to heart, if possible, daily. Take a breathing time. Take a time out. You are so busy. You have so much happening in your lives. It is crucially important that you have some time for you. This could be shopping. This could be a bubble bath. This could be reading a book. This could be some television time. I do not care what it is, but if you take a time out for you and allow that space, that is what makes you ready, available spiritually, 
emotionally and physically to be there for your husband because it doesn't feel like another thing on your calendar. This is very important. Are you getting this? Take some time for you. Work on it together. Now, this might get a little more personal, but I want you to do something else. Buy matching underwear. It sounds silly, I know, but when you have panties and bras that match, it makes you feel better. You say, I don't have money for that. Well, I can tell you, when you tell your husband that that is what you want and that that makes you feel better, usually financially that is not an issue. And you could even do this in different ways. Get a special nighty. They like it when you take care of it and show that you actually want to be together, that you show a desire to make a difference. I want you to get a special nighty or do something special for that, for yourself for that night. So those were a couple of things that were very important. The most important one was a timeout for you. Now for the husband. For a lot of women, it is important that they have an orgasm. And often, they do not get that satisfaction. Just remember that she has needs too. That doesn't mean it has to be every time like that. But also, just like the lover showed it to the beloved, so should you care for her needs and not only for your own. Allow her to have that time out and to get that break. And remember, sometimes you have to put it on the calendar. And one rejection doesn't make the second one as one as well. Give her the time and the patience that she needs. Allow her that place. And also you take care of yourselves to be your best for her. Then there is another couple's tale. The bedroom. We have the bedroom. Do not argue in the bedroom. Do not pay bills in the bedroom and this is for the both of you, and make this a special place. This should be not a collection for laundry, laundry happens, or clean laundry to be done. This should be a sacred, beautiful place for the two of you. If you want music or candles, whatever it is, it is wide open to you. And one more thing, how about God? How does God look at it? And God sees this as beauty. He has created it for good, not for dirty, not for ugly, not for evil. That's what Satan has changed it into it. He has not created it for porn. He has not created it for sex outside of the marriage. He has created it for unity, for procreation, for fruitfulness together, and to be one together in body, spirit, and mind. And the more you draw close to God, the more you get to know each other, the more this should become part of your life. Because this intimacy was designed for good and not for ugly. And God wants you to have that as a gift to you. Sex should not be bought. Sex should not be sold. Sex should not be done with animals. Sex should not be at the last line. Because when that happens, it destroys in the way God created as a gift for you. Because it says, in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 2. But because of immoralities, each man is to have his own wife, and each woman is to have her own husband. The husband must fulfill his duties to his wife, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but because the husband does, and likewise also the husband does not have authority over his own body, but his wife does. Stop depriving one another, except by agreement for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer and come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. The beloved got it. The beloved understood it. And she said, it's so beautiful, because at the end, what she says, let me find it for you. At the end, she shares, I am my beloved's, and my beloved's is mine. They were there together. And the closer they knitted together, the closer they built each other up. The men showed affection. The men received desire for the wife, the woman, and they two worked together. The more beautiful it became, the less junk the less outside came in the way. And that is 
And that is what God wants for you. Some people look at this book and see it not as a sex book, not as a love intimate book, but as a book that God sees this and created this as Christ, the way he looks at the church. And I've read it that way, and it is beautiful. But I believe that God takes it so much further than that. He believes it as an intimate moment to build something that he creates to be beautiful for you. Let me say a prayer for you right now. Oh, God Almighty, you design sex between man and a wife husband and a wife for beauty, to draw them close together, to have something so intimate, to make it special, fruitful, to, to have children, and to have a gift to one another. Help us to receive that, to embrace it, to not become indifferent, but to build each other up. Help us to praise each other, to draw close together and to give honor to you by giving us that incredible gift. Amen. I love to talk to you. I love to connect with you. Call me, 855-836-1100, or go to bartv.org. I love to encourage you, and God loves you to have the best he intended for you. Have a great day.